dare to be different. This is the statement Google went with when they came up with the Pixel 4 and the 4XL. It may look the same like the latest iPhones from the back, but they have really gone different when it comes to the notch, display, and the missing ultra-wide camera. Well, you may not be impressed with the look at first sight, and looking at the specs sheet, it may not even be that impressive. But after you use it for a while, you do start to appreciate it and its nifty little features. Hey what's up guys, this is someone here from Explore Gadgets, and this is the Pixel 4 XL review. Now I'm a big stock Android fan since the Nexus 4. There's something about pure Android that just gets me, and I keep trying every new phone Google comes out with. Only in stock Android devices, you get to see what real Android is like. Google wants you to see how their pure form of Android handles the OS and usage with OK specifications. It's also the first one in line when the new version of Android comes out, and since the Nexus 6P, it's among the best pick every year for the best camera on a smartphone. Now don't get me wrong here, I'm not going to be biased in this review after a month of using this phone. I will truly share what I love about it and what I hate about it. First and foremost, the unboxing experience was really good, and I also got a sleek looking case that went well with the color of my choice. It comes with a USB-C to USB cable alongside an adapter and a fast charger. And while looking around the Pixel, the big change from the Pixel 3 is the elimination of the ever so ugly notch and the very useful fingerprint scanner. Don't get me wrong here, I love to have more real estate on my display, and the notch on the iPhone and Samsung are bearable, but the one that Pixel had before this was just way too much. It's a good decision to rather have this chin and the forehead than that unbearable notch we had before. However, this look doesn't feel like 2019. And yes, bezel-less is a thing, but it is not a feature you cannot live without, as it makes no difference on the usage. You get the same amount of features and uninterrupted display. But this was a risky move from Google to keep the ugly forehead, and it might be a big letdown for most of us. Now looking around the Pixel, we have a dual camera on the back with a square hump for the camera making it so identical to the latest iPhones. But this layout for the cameras is the most practical and technically correct. Then we have the ever so glossy glass back as the black colored version only has the gloss finish. But unfortunately, the glossy one is a super fingerprint magnet. It catches a lot of fingerprints and smudges with dirts, so wiping it often becomes a habit. And ironically, this phone is also a fingerprint magnet without the fingerprint sensor. Looking around, you have the colored power button with not so clicky volume keys, the SIM card tray on one side, USB-C port, bottom firing speakers, and no headphone jack. Now if you have watched Jerry Riggs video, you will know where the pressure points are. But keep in mind that the pressure Jerry puts on his tests are never likely to happen in real life. It's an okay phone that will last longer if you're careful enough and if you use a case and a screen protector. And for some reason, the screen protector for the iPhone 11 Pro Max can be used on the Pixel 4 XL, and it's almost a perfect fit. Internally, the Pixel 4 XL houses a Snapdragon 855 chipset with 6GB of RAM, 64-128GB of storage, 6.3-inch P-OLED screen, which has the refresh rate of 90Hz, only sometimes, 3700mAh battery that can be charged wirelessly, and a Face ID as a biometric security. You have an 8MP selfie camera and dual 12.2 and 16.8MP cameras. Now that the specs are out of the way, I will tell you why I said 90Hz sometimes. I think most of us are already aware that the Pixel 4's 90Hz refresh rate only works in few conditions and gets back to 60Hz. Mostly on full brightness and intensive gaming, the 90Hz gets triggered and you can see the full potential of the display. But normally, the display is 60Hz like other flagships. You can always force the 90Hz via developer settings, but it will surely drain your battery to almost half its capacity. This isn't a huge issue as most of the flagships still uses the 60Hz refresh rate. But come on Google, why market something if it's only conditional? But either way, the display is good enough even at 60Hz. The only issue I personally had with this are the corners are way too rounded, and it will make some of the contents look a little odd. Talking about the issue, another issue that this is famous for is the radar system underneath the big forehead. For some reason, I couldn't use this feature where I live, but looking how unnecessary and dramatic this controls look on the internet, I am glad it's disabled. And the Face ID has a problem too. It's more complicated to use, and I'm rather okay with an extra step of swiping up. The Face ID on the Pixel 4 really feels like it is under development. It gets unlocked with your eyes closed, 
can unlock at unwanted times or won't even unlock if you don't directly place your head right in front of the sensor. You can tweak its settings to make it more practical, but the way sensors work won't change and that's a bummer. Now let's talk about the software. The Pixel 4 XL is running the latest version of Android, Android 10 out of the box. The major changes with this is the face unlock on the newer Pixel phones, overhaul gesture navigation, and the new version of Google Assistant. The gesture navigation takes a while to get used to, and sometimes it's a hit or miss. You can't instantly go back to apps that uses the slider menu as an option. Multitasking is also tricky, and while gaming you have to know where to swipe up from. It's an early stage of using only gestures to navigate, so you might need some time getting used to. However, you can always bring back the traditional navigation buttons of Android. But again, that feels like using an old Android phone. Also the new voice recorder app with its magic instant transcription is cool and all, but I never actually had to use this feature other than actually testing to see how it actually works. If I were studying in a school, it would be a great way to record the entire lecture, but I don't go to school and I don't have frequent meetings, so this won't be any use to me. But I gotta say, this is pretty darn accurate. This feature is only available in English, and you can replay your recording with highlights according to the transcription too, which is again really cool. I just wish I could use this more often. Now, let's come to the good sides the Pixel 4 has to offer. It has to be the camera. The Pixel series have the reputation of dominating mobile photography since the original Pixel. And I can confidently say it is keeping this title this year as well. I would buy this phone even if it was a point and shoot camera. The pictures are that good. You can get amazing shots out of this dual camera setup. Even the zoomed shots are high quality. You can zoom up to two times and the rest is digitally zoomed. Comparing this with the other latest flagships, it certainly does a better job at rendering details, like even the hair strands. It is certainly better than the old Pixel 3. It has better exposure with less noise and colors are almost true to life. And I'm saying almost because sometimes the color tends to pop more than they should, especially while taking pictures with strong highlights. But this means capturing details in the high contrast areas is excellent on the Pixel 4, especially in broad daylight or in a well-lit room. However, the selfie camera doesn't have a whole lot going on for it. It still takes amazing selfies like it did before and it is still amongst the best selfie cameras, but we've had better selfies from other phones on our testing. I will let the picture do the talking here and will share some of my pictures from the Pixel 4 XL. Now to the video. The Pixel does the job just fine and you can shoot great videos with it. But it's nothing too impressive and it cannot shoot in 4K at 60fps as Google is trying to save your phone storage. But I'd still like to have an option. The best video you can get out of this is at 1080p at 60fps, which packs great details with minimal noise, the exposures and colors are spot on too. The video stabilization is also quite good. And to support this amazing camera, it has a great default camera app to go with it. This camera app now has dual exposure controls, which means you can manually adjust the highlights and the shadows while taking pictures, which is great in scenarios where the background is brighter than the subject. And each camera mode also comes with respective settings to change the file format, aspect ratio, focus setting, and so on. I really wish it had a full manual control to make the most of this amazing camera, but I guess this will be only possible via third-party apps. I really do hate Google's decision on not choosing to have a wide-angle camera. I personally barely use the wide-angle camera mode, but hey, it's always great to have an option. You can also do so much with a wide-angle camera, and everybody's got one except Google. Alongside the great camera, the Pixel is also great for media consumption. Well, it's not the biggest display out there, but without the notch, you have full view of your media contents backed up by amazing dual speakers. Whether it's music or voice calls, the sound output is loud and spacious, which is one of my top priority on a smartphone. However, the battery life on the Pixel 4 XL is pretty average for my usage. While the iPhone 11 Pro Max and Note 10 are killing it on battery department, even with the bigger Pixel, I can barely manage to make it throughout the day. 
I've had times where while using the phone, the battery just goes down a percent or two, and I have to charge it before the evening starts. To me personally, I love the XL with the amazing camera, speaker, and the purest form of Android. But I really don't know why I would recommend this phone to others when there are better phones at the same price point or even lower. But I will be using this phone because I don't mind the forehead or the chin. I don't have people unlocking my phone while I'm asleep. And I have a charger everywhere I go so charging twice is also not an issue. But for someone looking for a worthy phone for the price they pay, it is still a great choice that gets the job done but certainly not the best.